Well, welcome back. Uh, if you've been here before, you know that my channel is about life after 70. Um, I'm 77 years old. My name is Paul. And if you are um, new to the channel, um, welcome. And I, I hope that you'll find some value here. Today, I'm going to talk about something that is kind of big news um, for me as a Lucid owner. Um, what's happening is a new update is being uh, pushed out right now. I, I don't have it yet, but I expect to have it any day. Um, it's a big deal for Lucid owners because we're going to have a couple of new things. Um, a big one for everybody, for all Lucid owners, is that there will now be access to the uh, DC fast charging stations uh, at um, Tesla, Tesla superchargers. Um, I should say slow fast chargers because they're going to be available to us and which is fantastic i'm very excited about it it's going to make road tripping a lot better a lot easier but the um the limitation on it is that uh, lucid is an 800 volt system this gets kind of technical but uh it's a high voltage system and the the chargers that um that tesla has are currently um, 500 volt system. So it, what it means in a nutshell is that we'll be able to charge at them, but only at a slower speed. We can charge up to 50 kilowatt, uh, 50 kilowatts uh, max uh, with the Lucid uh, currently. As, as Tesla upgrades their superchargers and they um, come out with the new generation, full generation four chargers, they'll be able to give us full um, charging speeds uh, at the at the those when they do appear but right now we're limited to just having uh, that 50 kilowatts um, now that is a problem but it's not a problem because for me I don't char do fast charging that often and really what I need is to fill in the gaps on long trips that I make where there, there's a charging desert where there's not charging stations um, readily available uh, in some of the isolated places, but Tesla's got them everywhere. So I'll be able to fill in those gaps and, and just add a, the range that I need very quickly, maybe 10, 15 minutes at 50 kilowatts. And if I add uh, 10 kilowatt hours to my battery, that's, that's probably all I'm gonna need. So it is a, a, a big change that's important change um, for those of us that own EVs to be able to get access to, to Tesla's supercharger network. Uh, the other thing that's coming out on this that's going to affect me because I have the Dream Drive Pro uh, software on my or hardware on my car that I will be able to do hands-free driving. Now before I had to keep a hand on the steering wheel and kind of give it a little motion every 15 to 30 seconds to keep it from alerting. Now I'll be able to just basically put my hands down on um, using that that feature. It'll be a uh, hands ready but won't have to be on the steering wheel anymore and some of the places that i drive out on my road trips are long expanses of uh, highway uh, that it'll just make it more comfortable and and more pleasant driving those long distances it won't be available on all highways currently it's going to be i believe just on uh, interstate highways mostly uh, highways that that are um, separated have a medium in the middle where there's no uh, oncoming traffic. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how that all rolls out. And anyway, I'm, I'm anxious to get it and then I'll be sharing my experience with that when I do get it. But the topic today is the EV range killer. And the reason I'm talking about that is because Car and Driver just published a EV test that they did. And they, they did a test that I attempted to do in my, my uh, Lucid is to find out the efficiency between different speeds because um, the killer of range in an EV is speed. The faster you go, the worse the efficiency is. So it's a real important thing to, to know what your optimal speed is or what the optimal efficiency is for the speed that you're driving. Um, because sometimes you get into a place where maybe you're a little bit concerned about um, how far the next charging station is and, and, and how fast you should drive just so you can conserve the battery so that you'll have plenty when you get there. That's becoming much less of a problem, especially now that we have um, access to the uh, Tesla Supercharge network. 
it's it's going to become much much less of a problem. The uh, range anxiety is really unnecessary anymore. Um, there isn't any place that you can probably go that you don't have you know that wouldn't have a charging station available to you. Um, but Car and Driver did this 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 article on this, and it was pretty pretty interesting. They took a Lucid Air Pure and a Kia uh, EV9 and a Subaru. Forester gas car and they ran it around a track at different speeds. They tested the range at 35 miles an hour. They tested it at 55 miles an hour. They tested it at 75 miles an hour and they tested it at 95 miles an hour. Uh, and using the car's onboard computer, they measured what the true range is um, doing that. And the key findings on that were the Lucid Air Pure, which is what they tested, which is what I have, the Lucid Air Pure. Uh, theirs is a 2025 model that they did the testing with. Mine is a 2023. Not big differences, but some difference. They tested it at 55 miles an hour and uh, under near ideal conditions. And they tested it at 75 miles an hour. Um, at 55, it got about 410 miles of range. But it, at 75 miles an hour, they lost it lost 88 miles of range. So pretty significant difference. At 95 miles an hour, it dropped all the way to uh, 60 to 65 percent of the 410 miles. So a very significant loss. And a lot of that, you know, is due to just aerodynamics. The faster the wind is an, is an enemy of an EV. If you're in a headwind or you're in a tailwind, you know, it makes a big difference as to what kind of uh, efficiency you're going to get. Uh, the Kia, uh, it lost about 100 miles of range uh, going from 55 to 75 miles an hour. So it lost a pretty big chunk of miles by going from 55 to 75. And uh, the gas car, the Subaru, it lost about 200 miles when it went from 55 to 75 miles. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, speed does kill the range. And we've known that if you've owned an EV, you're, you should already know that, probably already know that. But I just thought that this was kind of an interesting article about how it um, the testing they did, and and it kind of parallels the testing I did. I was out in the middle of the desert, out in a straight landscape that was uh, in an old um, lake bed in the desert that that was flat, and I did the same thing where I I slowed down at different speeds to see the efficiency, and I had pretty much the same result. Um, but I know that if I want to get the best efficiency out of my car, I need to be driving at about forty or 50, excuse me, about 50 miles an hour in order to, to get the best efficiency for the car. I don't drive that fast unless I really have a reason. I drive a lot faster than that. I, I uh, like the performance of my car and I enjoy uh, driving it and um, I don't want to drive like an old man. I want to, I want to have some fun with it. So, uh, but anyway, that's kind of a, in a nutshell what the article is all about. I'm going to post a link to that article here so you can uh, see the read the article. It's pretty interesting, and and I um, it, it made me think a lot about efficiency too because I've always felt like the thing if you're shopping for a car, you really need to look at how many how efficient it is and how many. Uh, miles you get per kilowatt hour out of the battery because you can have a gigantic battery in the car and um, If you have bad efficiency, you're just gonna be paying a lot of money first off for the battery when you buy the car Because that's the most expensive part of an EV is the battery so if you can if you can get a more efficient car and You can buy a car with a smaller battery because it's so efficient it's going to save you a lot of money up front in the cost of the car, and it's going to save you a lot of money in electricity costs to keep that car charged up. It'd be just like buying a car that gets 30 miles to the gallon versus one that gets 15 miles to the gallon of gas. Um, you, you're, the cost of electricity is some places in the country very expensive and some places are very cheap. Um, 
but it's something to consider and to think about. Um, and again, the upfront costs are expensive uh, for cars that have big batteries on top of the additional weight that they have to carry with them. So uh, again, I'd be shopping for a car, two, two real important things. I'd be shopping for a car looking at efficiency and how many miles you can go on a, a charge for say a 15 minute charge or 20 minute charge. How many miles can you put in your car in that 20 minutes? That to me is another real critical metric you wanna look at if you're shopping for an EV. So anyway, I hope this video is helpful to you. And if you, um, if you have any questions, comments down below, please. And if you like the video, a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of these videos and want to hear what's coming with the Lucid and, and my experience, or hit the subscribe button so you can get notified when, when my next video comes out. And thank you for joining me on Life After 70. Thanks. Bye.